All right. What is up, everybody? We got another match for you. I know you guys are super excited to see more Valorant. I am too. What's up, Marks? How's it going? It's been 10 minutes. I miss you. I haven't seen you in so long. <laughs> You were eating food in between it. Don't pretend like you weren't. You had bigger priorities so than me. I get it. It's fine. You can focus on your meal. <laughs> it was so good. <laughs> I'm sure it was. <laughs> Mac and cheese, for those of you who don't know. <laughs> but oh, man. we got we got some we got some some chefs cooking up in the kitchen here today. Uh, it's I believe it's precision versus the Glazers. I resonate. Where am I getting precision from? Resonate versus the Glazers. <laughs> Who is that team? It's not a team. Precision is on the team. I yes. don't. <laughs> precision is on the team. We have resonate versus the Glazers. And of course, resonate um, kind of fighting for that top spot alongside the Glazers to move on to that midseason. Yeah. So at this point now, we are in our last deciding match. Like you said, one of these teams is going to be able to move into the midseason, but the other one, unfortunately, says goodbye. And uh, this is going to be an interesting matchup that we've got in front of us, because uh, obviously, if you take a look at the bracket as to where all of the teams fell, originally, we actually saw that it was the Glazers losing out to Blin, and then Blin proceeded to 2-0 Resonate. And of course, we were kind of speculating at first if Resonate go up against the Thinking Men again. Well, they kind of won out that matchup, so maybe there's going to be a little bit of history here. But this time around, we're walking into unprecedented territory as the Glazers are going to go up against Resonate. Yeah, Resonate, a team that I feel like is going to prove to be quite difficult to win against. Again, they, they did knock down... Uh, well, Blin Esports knocked them down, but they did knock down Thinking Men. And that in itself was, uh, I mean, a, a huge, huge thing. So uh, to be able to see Resonate kind of in action now, especially with <laughs> maybe kind of getting to see a little bit of them in, you know, promotion relegation, uh, a little bit in open qual open qualifiers at number two. Uh, of course, I'm I'm pretty excited. I mean, they didn't really do too well in the open qualifier number one for, for VCL. Um, kind of getting knocked down in that round of 64. But here they are now and potentially putting themselves in, in that limelight. So <laughs> this is the big match to kind of, like you said, put yourself into that limelight. I mean, obviously, when we looked at Resonate yesterday because uh, they were on the mainstream, playing a little bit more unconventionally with how they wanted to approach certain things. Uh, I believe it was both Keg and Tenrek who were pointing out that it was strange, yet somehow they still were able to make it work against Thinking Men. And yet Thinking Men were the ones who we saw a little bit more creativity from. But of course, now that the Glazers, we've got a little bit of an idea on their own playstyle. One thing that I was really impressed by throughout our last matchup was how willing they were to really just adapt based on what was happening. It felt like they got stuck a little bit on Sunset specifically, but they were playing a lot more flexible. And I think that that is going to lend itself perfectly, given the fact that Resonate likes to be a little bit different, likes to go against the grid just a bit more, uh, especially making sure that you're being flexible, being a little bit more dynamic on how you play things could really help out the Glazers in this matchup. I think it could. Honestly, the Glazers running off from a win, too. <clears throat> Definitely feels good. Resonate having the time to sit back, relax and watch as well. So that's definitely one of the other things. So. I mean, it's either resonate kind of right into this team, know what this team is capable of, or uh, the Glazers kind of doing the research as well. It really depends. I guess it's more so the people who are the most ready for it, which I'm ready for it. I want to see what's going on. I want to see the map picks and bands. I want to see what we're dealing with here um, and more so where we're heading. So. Yeah, and of course, we are going to be getting those maps up here now. And so this is really interesting because we're starting out with Ascent. I think Ascent is one of those pretty neutral maps between every single team ever because it's once again, like it's Ascent. Everyone knows Ascent. <laughs> Everyone's been playing Ascent since Valorant first launched. But potentially riding off of the high of their last matchup, we're actually seeing the Glazers go for Sunset as their second pick. Yeah. Which I think this, this is really interesting because historically, up until like kind of this tournament, we haven't seen the Glazers be really good at Sunset. But given the confidence that they played with on their last matchup, they're picking this one in to resonate. And so I think that that is going to be the more questionable. See if that kind of works out for them. It feels a bit more like a gamble pick to me. It could honestly quite be, oh, man, Sunset. Nah, TG, they, they did perform pretty well on Sunset. I think they're feeling confident about it 
Um, obviously, the ban on Icebox coming through, not too much of a surprise, but, you know, with Ascent being that first map, I'm wondering how that's going to go. My biggest concern is, obviously, this is like an OG map. Everybody knows how to play a map like this. There's the meta. There's things you can do. Uh, uh, Sova Odin is <laughs> things that we, we typically That's see. <laughs> yeah, and it feels like a, a testament more so to skill um, on that first map of Ascent. So we're going to be able to see who might have the most skill, uh, yeah. depending on who wins that first hand map. But, of course, definitely waiting for that and seeing how that's going to go is kind of nerve-wracking. A little bit and i mean obviously we t i i just said it where there was a little bit more difference as to how um sorry they were playing their composition but for ascent just keep it stock standard i mean that's kind of how resonate like to go about it and so this is going to be an interesting one i i'm curious to see how they're going to flex their ascent gameplay and how the glazers are going to be doing this because like you said before resonate they went through the vcl circuit they were trying to make it but just fell out of the qualifiers i believe losing to core and saint Clair saints which are both two pretty good teams and now they're kind of back and it looks like they've got a very solid shot at earning that second qualification spot a big shot at earning that qualification spot but it's a lot of hard work um of course for sure so Man, I, and I can't even imagine the mental of of knowing that this might be your last chance. You're putting yourself uh, into that position. So that's in itself definitely could take a toll on the gameplay uh, kind of going into it today. I know a lot of people tend to play scared or, or whatnot. I know we did see the Glazers and, and their resolve and confidence throughout the games coming through today in particular. So I, I'm thinking that's going to continue. Yeah, I mean, that's the thing about the Glazers, right? If you take a look at the Challengers split, uh, they unfortunately didn't win a single series. It's been very difficult for them to be able to pull it through. And then they kind of enter into this tournament, immediately kind of get beaten out by Blin, who then go on to qualify. It, The fact that they're still holding on to their mental as well as they are, and they're keeping their heads in the game, I think yep. speaks a lot to the resilience of this team. And once again, they've now just had a warm up match in front of them and they are looking good. So this is going to be the best shot that they've also got right now, that all of the things are aligning for them to also get the second qualification spot. And honestly, it's it's really difficult to predict which one of these teams is going to be able to come out on top. Yeah, but agent selection is ready and we got to see what the compositions are looking like firsthand. Seems like as we slowly make our way over to Ascent, it's exactly what we expected with a little bit of OG, OG, OG back in the day I'm seeing. With the oh. sage there. <laughs> There's no shot that you just used back in the day type. Back of in the back me. in the Valorant. When I talk to my children and I say back in the day, I'm I'm talking <laughs> about the I'm talking about the patch. When back Valorant in the, first went live. <laughs> back in the older patch days. Yeah, and that's I mean, <laughs> that's go how on. they're gonna live their lives. <laughs> <laughs> they're gonna live their lives in the old patches of Valorant, no matter where the game state is at. But yeah, that's interesting. We're seeing the sage get brought in for resonate here which means that they're not going to have the abilities of the KO available. And traditionally, I know I've talked about this a lot on the last map, but the reason why you bring on that KO is it works as a little bit more of a deterrent against yeah. people entering into the site on that defensive half or walling people out just thanks to that fragment. Of course, KO also brings a couple of flashes, which is an excellent supplement, given the fact that the Omen flash isn't exactly the most powerful thing. Like, it can't flash everybody, it just kind of goes in a straight line. It's still a pretty powerful straight line. But having a little bit more flexibility there, that's why you see the KO get brought in traditionally. So, Goppers, I'm super curious to see how this one is going to play out. I am too. I... <clears throat> Double Sentinel is so interesting to me. Yeah. Um, especially since it's been proven that KO does a pretty good work, I feel like. But obviously all about comfort as well. Already trying to gather some information, rounding about in mid, but not a lot going on. Especially no util, so that's huge on that mid controller. And this is interesting, we're actually seeing right now Resonate set themselves up, pushing a little bit heavy on a tree, but this Killjoy utility is going to make this a lot more painful. Yes, yeah, so they're looking to push things up though. Resonate finding some sort of battle with the Glazers, and it seems like they're not going to be able to win it out slowly but surely, though. Andrew, I got the spike. I mean, taking in the shots, making sure this team doesn't have anything to play for. Remaining. Heal coming through, and now finally some sort of 
plant to come down. And it's looking good on the side of Resonate. Already off the rip. No util to utilize except for Recon Dart, but they don't need it. They know exactly where this team is, but huge. Off of Zachary. New pistol round. Not working out in favor of Resonate, but I mean, TG, but still Valiant effort. One to oh. Yeah, Resonate. They looked like sharks with a little bit of a drop of blood in the water. And that comes down to a little bit of confidence, obviously, but the sight hit happened so quickly. And just staying alive as well, putting their bodies into weird positions despite the fact that there were flashes going on, it forced the members of the Glazers who were on that A site to really have to pivot around and be vigilant as to what was happening. Forcing out the gunfights was an excellent way for Resonate to be able to win that one out. And now, have a little bit better weaponry coming into this one, as expected. Ooh, that was up top! And yeah, drop Zachary. The aggression gets punished. And they're still pushing for that despite the blind? Riku, able to walk away with their lives. And even then a push out from Ange that doesn't really sit well with the audience there, but TG cannot seem to fight back in return for Resonate. I mean, I can see why the Ascent pick was there. It's such a quirky pick for for like an, an over, like the composition they wanted to run, but I, I do like it. And it's, it's not very significant though. Like Sage is not that bad, but at the same time, it, it could be. <laughs> like, <laughs> Wow, way to really just cross your T's and dot your I's. It could be bad. It could be good. I'm, you know, depends hey, on how you play it. Ain't nobody <laughs> quoting me. That's all I'm going to say. <laughs> <laughs> Fair enough. But once again, the biggest reason why I think the Sage pick was strange is because you're taking away from the KO. Um, and right now, it doesn't seem like they even need it. They're just playing so confident in their gunplay uh, that obviously the pistol round is a better example of it because it was a little bit more evened out. But still, like, it's just looking really solid from Resonate. They're just kind of running over the competition, not really relying on that utility, which uh, it I don't know how well that's going to play in some of these future rounds once you see that weaponry start to get bought up from the Glazers. But this is a very, very, very fast start from Resonate, and it doesn't look like they're trying to slow their momentum at all. They are not walking straight into a blind and shooting <laughs> is the way I play Valorant as well. It seems like they are <laughs> doing a great job though, Resonate. <laughs> Those scoundrels still having some, <laughs> some phantoms and vandals stuck inside of their arsenal though this round. So it could work out for the best. I feel like uh, that hero rifle definitely keeping itself in place though already. Information given away mid sight, smoke. Kind of lead back potential, but they're not going to pick this up. If anything, it's just to keep some sort of attention surrounded there. But even then, they have some sort of alarm bot, so not much worry. Yeah, and this time around, I said how we saw Resonate just kind of steamroll the defense, but they completely slow things down. And once again, we're going into the situation where they're not really fully aware of what is happening, but they're just kind of waiting things out, letting the Glazers get a little bit more uncomfortable before they decide to commit. As a reminder, okay. Resonate. Well, they've got more than enough weaponry to be able to even this thing out. And I'm wondering if they're just trying to play off of that element of surprise, uh, you know, use the weaponry. Oh, hey, we have rifles, not just pistols. And that could be the determining factor. But drone right now, this is a good position. Stay down. I think that the smoke might just be able to do something, but it doesn't there. Now paranoia settled down. To try to distract this team from maybe taking some of these shots in, but TG, they've done a good job at holding back, at least for the time being. KHS and 30 seconds left. Conti still having their weapons in hand, but of course, Sova Odin, I called it, still there. <laughs> <It's>, <laughs> it, it makes an appearance every time, and I love it so much. Honestly, a tale as old as time. Sova Odin assassinated. Yeah, we're going to be seeing a mad this dash here, but Precision, thing. Killjoy, tosses out the volleys, make it a little bit more difficult. I don't even yep. know if there's going to be enough time. Oh, yeah, just enough time to plant, but Blazer's in a comfortable position. 3v2, actually. Resident know they need to keep this on lockdown. Any sort of space allows remaining. a pinch to come through, but then, unfortunately, not going to be able to play with that. A huge, huge disadvantage on the side of Resonate, but still trying to fight this through Riku wide swing to make sure TG are not taken out of the game. 
And honestly, Resonate, that was a pretty nifty idea there. I mean, yeah. they were able to not only get the spike down, but get a couple of picks as well. Make the economy just a little bit more uncomfortable for TG. But of course, that Odin still is going to stay alive for another round. This? Of course, Conti now really having helpful. the Resurrect available as okay. well. And so this things aren't all completely done they just quite yet. Be seeing yet another buy up. Try and match things out. Fortunately, Resonate, a couple of them won't have that full weaponry available, but the other three will have Vandals moving into this one. So this one's not over yet. As Zachary now set up to go a little bit more aggressive down mid, could immediately get punished there by screens though. You're digesting some of that information around in mid. You can see the drone. Didn't really catch too much though, Zachary with the first hand shot. Seeming like they do want to back up out of this position, which is the best bet. So many players just surrounding themselves down in mid, but backup is there. And I like the aggression, the fact that they knew, hey, I'm going to push this. Uh, I'm going to need some sort of backup. So I mean, refract potential there. Conti's uh, going to have to back themselves off, maybe get a potential resurrection. Yeah, and it works out for the best. Finally, a second shot there from, from this team. And honestly, I think that that's just the Glazers once again doing an excellent job at playing around Zachary. At least keeping things more or less even. If the resurrection didn't come online, then it would have been an advantage just trading out their jet for a couple of picks, but not gonna be the case. But look at this positioning from Precision. Might get punished if Precision does not decide to back up here as Andrew takes the lead. They're trying their absolute best, but it doesn't go as planned, especially as Precision takes him the first shot. The 3v3. Now Riku settled down with the Odin alone. Beautiful wraparound coming through from Fellas, so it leaves some sort of potential there from us. From oh my gosh, res resonate! Ah, <laughs> <laughs> it's like I just want to say resolve. <laughs> and able to drop one, and actually that's an excellent fragment. Fellas is able to stay alive off of that one though. So two v two on this retake, making it a two v one. He's fighting for his life down in the backside. And that as well as the objective. But it seems like it goes straight into the hands of TG. I mean, huge push forward. And, and now a possibility for Drone to get their ultimate in the next round as well. Team A. Yeah, I mean, given the fact that that ultimate is going to be an extremely effective one. And on top of that, too, the Glazers are able to scrape that one off, getting the resurrection out of Conti. It's looking pretty good for the Glazers. And. It's an interesting thing how they're going about this right now, because Resonate, obviously, lack of flashes, and so they kind of have to just dry swing the corners and hope for the best, which has allowed the Glazers to get those opportunities. I mean, Zachary definitely made that clear. Precision as well, able to get a clean pick. But it's the positioning that Resonate is kind of adopting and their willingness to move around the map that's allowing for those punishes to kind of come through. Once again, just this is an excellent example of it. Vela's coming all the way around. You don't need a flash if you just catch them looking the wrong way. And so it's going to be that map control that I think that's going to really allow Resonate to continue to frag out as they are. But of course, the Glazers, I mean, moving into this next round, they've got the Hunter's Fury available. Like you said, Drone could just get one ultimate orb and have that null command online as well. Uh, they're set up for success here as Resonate are forced onto a little bit of a scrambled buy. Yeah, not much. Riku Hunter Siri. That tons of potential though. Yeah. For the ultimates to be loaded up on the Glazers. Bot coming back. Not to mention potential on the side of Resonate as well. So definitely looking at farming some of those orbs there, especially up on the A site. So many players here in that type typically does scare me. You have the omen one way, yep, and a pop flash that might actually be of use here. Or even then some some sort of partnership, but leaving Zachary down in wine to find to fend things off is kind of risky. And that's so interesting. You can tell how much the Glazers want that ultimate orb for the null command. They invest so much utility just to push them back to really secure it. And honestly, if you're resonate right now, you're happy with that. You're like, okay, we've just gotten so much out. Let's just run to the other side now and just try and challenge this killjoy. But Riku. Excellent position. That lack of flash is going to really hurt this. It seems like here, Riku. Put in some good work. 
I resonate with some sort of line. Oh. To kind of follow I through, drone me. pushing itself up above, but even then. I'm gonna put too much effort into it. It's Ange now, holding back. A 3v1 situation. The Glazers, I, I mean, again, great job. Keeping themselves intact, but it's KHS oh, oh. just trying to fight back with some sort of Hunter's Fury. I don't know, not really caught, working out. Yeah. Almost caught Ange there, left. too. Had, as a matter of fact, I had to use the Shadow Step to get out, and... Oh. Spike is in no man's land. This is so hard for KHS. I have Putting spike. in some of the work here. 12 seconds left. Ten seconds Finally left. collecting the spikes, but this is beautiful. <laughs> I thought they were the pinch. Would have went out differently, but yeah, and reposition was so, so scary, especially as you hear it come down. Yep. Oh man, uh, yeah. Odin, Silva, Ascent, classic. But of course, too, that Killjoy line up there, that's very easily classic, too. I mean, the swarm grenade goes off, it forces a little bit of a stagger between them. That's why you see the shadow step happen. Usually, you have your jet dash through it as well to get that space. But you don't expect the precision to just be sanded around there. And based off of that last series, precision was looking really good. And so already resonate, taking a little bit more space this time, playing a little bit more aggressively. But so far, the Glazers have them checked. Now four ultimates online for the Glazers. On top of that, too, Zachary has got that operator available online. A lot to play around with and resonate. This is going to be a tough round for them to win. And if the Glazers are able to pull it out, then Resonate's economy is going to be right back into the dumpster. Oh, and a huge miss from Zachary. Not wanting to test out the limits there, especially with a backup from Kaho. So they're trying to recollect themselves in a very, very different way. Waiting for the push up to come, especially with the positioning of the turret alone, but it seems like not going to happen. Right now we see Resonate, they tried to big brain the Glazers, but the Glazers hold their ground. That's excellent. Before only Kaho was spotted, they assumed that they would be like, well, that's just the Killjoy, but not actually the case. Look at that. Perfect timing with the Null Command. Resonate in such an uncomfortable position. 30 seconds left. Yeah, Zachary's waiting to pull through, though. Not gonna be able to get anything. 30 seconds left. They're gonna have to fight so much util down on the A site, and this might just be the riskiest play they've accounted for. Beautiful off of Rico and looking for more. They just can't find it, but regardless, the 2K solidifying themselves. That possibility for that 4 2. And yes, it will. That was like watching someone solve a puzzle. You know, when you got all those pieces and they all just click in at the exact same moment? Excellent play there from the Glazers. I talk about the fact that they stayed static on their defense, and that was ultimately the key that led them to win the round. You can tell that they were getting set up after hearing that Killjoy pick up the orb. Null command it, you got a lot of ultimates to spare. Immediately the back out starts to happen, and so the Glazers are reading them like a book. The paranoia catches all five of them, and then the Hunter's Fury comes through because they must all be funneling through there. Right now, Resonate just stuck in whatever the Glazers want them to do. Andrew using the Blade Storm. It's a scattered buy coming out from Resonate, but they're having a very you difficult time run. making their way onto site. I'm waiting to watch and hold, though. Oh, Andrew's still stuck up top, up above. Down comes Andrew and trying to throw around and find it. But even then, Resonate, they've done a good job at holding this team back. Zachary putting, I mean, some sort of reality into their face, but yeah. I mean, nice resurrection. And this is what I do like about this composition is, is the consistency of being able to get that second chance and that player advantage in seconds. But it's just so hard to make their way onto site. Already, you can tell they just have to completely backpedal, allowing the Glazers now to set up yet again. Where's the smoke available as well as that paranoia to potentially get them in and a barrier orb to kind of check things off, but they got to walk into this op. Can't seem to lock it in. Oh, man, and maybe the best bet would have been backing themselves off. I, I mean, the rotation wasn't even there yet. The plant wasn't there either. Precision with the biggest piece of util to get that retake in on a 3v4 situation, and they just blew it. Now, leaving Precision. 
to try to push the side alone. And it's Kaho stuck up front. A player that top fragged in the previous game against Thinking Men. And it, it doesn't surprise me that they're doing it again, honestly. I, I mean, the aim has been immaculate thus far. <laughs> yeah. Precision has looked nuts on the Cypher. This time around, I'm going to be seeing that Killjoy get played here. But hey, you know what? Credits owed where credits due. That was an excellent little microplay coming in with the Sage Wall. Uh, they knew that that operator was going to be there. The operator takes a lot of time to shoot between bullets. And so having that up and down strategy just available to go at a minute's notice, as well as having multiple people swing through, means that you're going to be able to punish the operator even if you lose one of the people on your side. So Resonate able to squeeze that one out off of a little play that I don't think that Zachary was expecting as uh, they're now one round away from potentially tying things up with the Glazers. But still, the Glazers, like you said, Precision still has the ultimate online, which could be absolutely massive, especially too if they want to play retake. And uh, Resonate, it feels like every single time they make their way onto site, they're losing a couple of members on the way. They're constantly pushing Zachary back out of that position, which I'm surprised they haven't learned their lesson yet, but a wall to push themselves above, and they're not used to stuff like that, but even then, they caught the midair and managed to get some of that damage down. It, I mean, that's gonna feel good. Oh, you know it's gonna feel great here. Oh, yeah, Resonate, not done yet. Yeah, now, even then, lockdown. Kind of backing these players out into the A site, but having to get past Drone, though seen drones aim before when the pop flash starting to make its way beautiful shots and it does not end there it, it there's no way around it you see drone you run the other way and now of course they've just pretty much put tg in the best position no humanly possible a huge win coming through from tg <laughs> Oh, man. Okay, so there, 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 there's two reasons why that play was able to work out well. And I think that the first one is still we're seeing the Glazers not fully rotate themselves around. They're being a little bit more patient, given the fact that Resonate like to just switch things around at a moment's notice here. Yeah. And uh, honestly, a flash grenade. Yeah, that's about it. The fact that that flash grenade was that's available crazy. just got all three of them and then it just completely mowed them down. Uh, that's why you bring a KO. I got nothing more to say on that matter. <laughs> Dude, that's that's the prime reason why you use your util. Like, the amount of times that I've seen people just fight things like that, like, raw. And it's like, dude, you had two flashes and a stun. What are we doing here? It's so perfect. And again, like, it, it, this team just knows how to put themselves in that top spot advantage. Yeah, but Ange are already backing themselves off. Okay, Odin, <laughs> what's going on here? <laughs> Yeah, and once again, too, this is something we've noticed from the Glazers, that they're extremely good at their util and how they're playing around it. And so this comes as no surprise that they can kind of use that util to just maximize value. Obviously, the Hunter's Fury earlier in this map was an even better showcase of that alongside that paranoia. But regardless, they're doing an excellent job as, once again, Resonate, they're playing a little this bit slowly so here. They've got four members on to A, but given the time on the clock, that doesn't necessitate that so that is the site that they're committing on. And I think that the Glazers are doing an excellent job, at least exploring a little bit more outside of Tree to get that piece of information. Now the engagement happens. Well, Spike down a. engagement there. Um, and now a divorce. Zachary has gone away. <laughs> they are not. <laughs> Don't want anything to do with Zealous. Zealous goes down. And of course, smoke's going to dissipate soon. So Andrew trying to fight some of this control up above. Oh, and some of that damage actually looking good, but... Can't seem to hold on to it. Amali, and 18 seconds until we do get to see that suppression kind of loaded up here. Unfortunately, no flashes readily available other than Ange. And a possibility for a paranoia, but it's Riku to get taken down and Ange there with the next step for a possibility at clearing it, but they resonate. They keep on holding on and Ange is not letting go. Just underneath might just be able to find it. And 1v1 with 92 health and a dream up to County, and they can't hold on precision has kept TG in the game. Wow. I mean, obviously, Ange coming in with the hero play there just kind of steps through and is able to just find one, two, three. Okay. All right. Finally, I'll go down, I guess. Damage has been done here, and the Glazers are starting to really walk away with it. Zachary obviously able to get that first pick nicely. Keho, though, trading back onto Drone is a massive pick halfway through, but Ange, once again, just 
kind of walking through. There's no utility really to support that post plant positioning. They're all just kind of jiggling from their individual positions, which allows a player to kind of go 50%. Let's see who's going to win the aim duel right now. And it's really starting to punish resonate as these rounds go further and further. Might just be the case. Okay, well, I wish Man. life were like that, where you, you spray and you, you get something eventually. I <laughs> Works out in the end, though. Managing to find something. Kaho with the ultimate. Yeah, it's a little bit of a scattered buy, though, this time around. For Resonate as well. Squad is pressuring heavily towards Tree. So that's a lot of information. And it just tosses out the paranoia, and that's going to completely slow things down. I'm looking to pick up some of that pacing there. It's like one after the other. Maybe Ange is going to be able to pick this back up, but Resonate just won't let this team feel any sort of patience within their gameplay. But all in all, Riku always tends to really bring things back. You know what I just learned, Mark? What's up? This is a premier team. Yeah. <laughs> one enemy remains. Absolutely insane. All dead? They're looking pretty darn good right now. But of course, you know, we are going to see the Glazers still be able to scoop up the round that time around. I mean, this feels like I'm just going to be making the same point over and over and over again. But because they don't have anything really to get them inside, they just have to go and hope that they can clear all of the angles, which are basically giving the Glazers free kills. The Glazers are kind of just like... Let's just set up a chair here and wait for them to push in because they can't flash me off an angle. They can smoke me off the angle, but that's still a little bit tough because they've only got a couple of smokes to work with because of that omen. And so you just see the Glazers playing kind of very statically here uh, while getting punished with all of this utility. Trying to make some sort of value with this, but man, it's already too late. Uh, I'm not so sure that that was the best bet. They've lost a paranoia, which honestly could have put in the work for maybe something a little bit further into the future. Now, with that being said, one player being detained isn't going to do too much, especially now with Riku trying to hold. Okay, well, no information there. And a big shot down. Kaho feels very, very good about that one. Oops. Doesn't feel good about that one, though, huh? No. <laughs> Unfortunately not. Faced with reality um, is the way to go, TG. <sighs> Fake out. The Conti knows, especially there with KHS. Slowly peeking the angle. Not going to do it. Instead, feeling pretty confident in a play that might have not been the best bat, but they don't shut it down enough. Pulled out a little bit earlier, and it would have worked, but regardless, does actually manage to stop the Hunter's Fury and leave Drone in a pretty good position there. Oh my goodness, Drone and Ange, I mean, teamwork impeccable. It's so interesting, because usually you see this Null Command get utilized when you want to stop the people from like pushing into you, or you're starting to retake the site. But what we're actually seeing Drone use the Null Command for is to counter other people's ultimates. And it's working pretty darn well. I mean, obviously that round, you shut down the Hunter's Fury, allowing for Ange to just stick that defuse there and force the hand of your opponent. But still, it's so tough for Resonate to try and find anything on this attack because they're just walking in and getting mowed down by one rifle or another. This time, they are going to be taking a lot more mid presence here. But still, they're just going to, once again, they're just going to have to walk into this. Okay, op shots going absolutely crazy. Fellas gets taken down on the A site. Complete lack of control to push through with this. They don't even have a recon dart to push through at nothing, so they have to go in blind. Of course, pushing Conti into the front lines of it. A pop flash not doing too much either, but a suppression that's readily available in a, in a second for the side of TG to use and a huge flank as well. Oh, this is beautiful. Yeah, that means that the turret's not going to be able to get any information there. And, oh, yep. that's a lot. You know where everyone is on the side. Oh, seeking some sort of beauty in the war of it all. Does get taken down by Precision Joe, though underneath hell, just can't get away from Ange. 
player standing. Oh, no. And uh, I mean, listen, Zachary is just not really <laughs> not gonna not gonna let anybody go. It's 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 nine to three, and TG they just continue to dominate. I mean, the, the coordination on this team is, is impeccable today. And yesterday, again, they just it's like something just clicked. Yeah, I mean, it's looking really good from the Glazers. <laughs> I mean, Zachary was just getting these picks for free here, but once again, it's Ange just walking through and systematically taking them down one after another. I got a little bit nervous there because, yeah, the shorty comes out. You don't have time to really clack the operator in time, but thankfully a blade storm available. So Zachary is able to scoop up that last kill and the Glazers are just running over Resonate right now. We're seeing this is Resonate's map pick and yet the Glazers up nine to three. You're a fan of Resonate? Well, I hope you believe in curses, because this is not looking good for this team. They're going to have to... I mean, they haven't even pulled through with the timeout. Uh, regardless, it's a bit too late now. Especially now with the pistol round starting to take its toll in reverse. But maybe the defense stronger. The potential for the attack here. TG already oh. pulling through and finding shots. It is impossible. It is just always working out in favor there, especially with Zachary now playing to their strengths. A spike now going to be going down here. Resonate already ready for this retake. It's be 4v5. Still staying in the corner. Oh, Paranoia pushed out pretty early, but Zachary still holding on very, very well. TG, a flawless round. Kind of brought into their pockets. 10-3, Resonate. Finding it pretty difficult to hang on. And uh, that was a little neat of an idea. You saw the barrier orb get utilized to make it a lot more easier to funnel your way in onto site. But, you know, you just walk in and you're in a bunch of crossfires with pistols flying at you. It all starts to fall apart. I thought that that was a little bit neat there. They three stacked it. We're hoping to at least get a pick or a trade or something. But once again, the flash drive as well as the smoke, make sure that Zachary can get away completely unscathed. Yeah tough round and the glazers now at double digits here weapons available and they're already running it down they're looking to move around though Take flight. trying to put themselves at the forefront maybe a would be the place to work it out it seems like dashing themselves away and now the smoke dissipating even zachary available to take any fight they want but as well as Spike down A. Making sure this team does not go anywhere. It's so interesting, too, because they forced that line. Enemy remaining. Now that they Last know here standing. on the side of TG that this team is trying to reel things back in. They're going to be a little bit more cautious there. A pickup from Kaho to take the singer, though. Actually, pick up a Vandal. Yeah, someone yeah. bought a Vandal for the Glazers. I do believe it was Zachary, but Spike now a very winnable scenario here. And still has one smoke available. And here's exactly where Kaho's coming from. Doesn't oh. even need it. Oh man. Taking the off angle. Uh, uh, it's surprising. I mean, there really wasn't anything else to do. You did have to wide swing the angle. So, I mean, valiant effort from Kaho, but yeah, still pushing through. But economy is just messed up at this point. Yeah, it's 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 all over the place. And to be fair, Resonate really had to try anything that they could on that last round. And so you saw the force buy up because if they lose that one anyways, it's still not looking good for them. And well, it's not looking great for them on this round. It was extremely close, but just a little bit of an outplay there. And uh, now look at that free B site more or less as we see Zachary already in onto the site and it's going to clear this out. It'll be a very fast plant for the Glazers. Unless. Yes, Zachary is. So risky. I'm surprised they're teaching. I mean, they have like a level of confidence that I feel like nobody else can really acquire at this point. I mean, they are 11 of 3 against Resonate. Oh. But they're so separated. There really is nothing to play for. Not even watching the flank. Lack of utility coming through on the defense down in mid. Especially with that being said. Kind of potential oh. for the retake going slimmer and slimmer each and every time, but a 4v3. The Vandal still left inside of their pocket. Zachary getting a little bit too close for comfort, but might just be able to find some sort of potential there and eliminating themselves down the line. 
It's up to TG to slowly pick themselves back up off the ground with Ange, especially trying to take in the flank, and it might work out. Ange and Precision bringing things to a match point. Match that was point. a masterclass from Ange and just playing so patiently. Waiting for their time to strike there. Because you'll see that that Omen was hanging out there for the longest time. Trying to see whether or not that rotation was going to be coming around. But nah, not going to be the case. And eventually when the time is right, you see the movement in. Completely catching Resonate One by surprise. And forcing the hand, honestly, of Andrew to fly into Precision's crosshairs. It just worked out so perfectly for them. Now the Glazers... They're on map point. They're ready to seal the deal on this map. Not even their map pick, but they're looking extremely confident on it. They remove themselves from the situation, though. And try not to push up too aggressively on the defense. There is such a big lack of killjoy util. I and mean, I'm assuming because they did have to buy the Vandal alone, so you, th that speaks for the economy itself, although that's going to have a big toll on the push coming up through A. Unless Velas has something to say about it, Paranoia readily available, Pop Flash already set down towards the back, and they have perfect potential! But again, reposition there, and they didn't even try to use the util! Paranoia gone! And potential for that 13-3 to come through is even bigger. And that's the thing, once again, Resonate really relying on a lot more of that just hard gunplay to be able to win out their rounds, and Fortunately, with the Glazers playing so cautiously around their utility, it's become so much more difficult for them to be able to find those opportunities. The paranoia comes in, and yeah, that's gonna push people back. Omen kill. 30, 30 seconds, seconds left. left. And absolutely nothing planted, but they get spotted out. Spike and even then, last player stands. still trying to hold on to everything that they can TG, just wanting to end things off. And a Hunter's Fury available, but not Attackers ready to use 13-3 to end things off, by the way, for TG. And a flawless match, by the way. I wasn't expecting this. It, it's so odd because you see, like, such a dominant performance from, from a team like Resonate going up against uh, Thinking Men. Uh, and obviously, it comes down to, I mean, Blaine Esports were the ones to knock them down as well. Blaine is kind of just really rolled with it, with the punches at that point. But it, it's crazy to see such a drastic, drastic difference when you go up against a team that you know nothing about, uh, especially when it comes to the Glazers, because they have been putting in the work today. Yeah, I mean, once again, the Glazers, how they've been playing, we could tell based off the first series as well. They're a lot more, there's a lot more of a heavier influence that's not the right word, but they want to use their <laughs> utility a little bit more. They want to play off of their utility, you know, play smart off the utility, because I think when it comes down to just raw gunfights, besides Zachary and Precision, that's not true. They do have a couple big fraggers on their team, but it sets them up to be in so much, so many better positions where it, as it just didn't seem that not, that was the case for Resonate. They were consistently just kind of dry swinging in, hoping to win out trades overall, and then just win the gunfights based off of that. And it was really starting to be, be apparent as those rounds went on, that lack of flash ability just was so difficult for them to be able to properly execute anything on. Well, it was an incredibly quick game, <laughs> which surprises me quite a bit, uh, just based off of the fact that, I mean, <sighs> Every everything that 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 was kind of happening there resonate. It just kind of felt like they were a bit disproportionate. Um, teamwork was there. We got to see it on occasion, but I feel like Util definitely could have used some of that work, especially around mid, because they abused mid control from time to time on that attacking half, and so many flanks came through. There was absolutely no information. So I feel like uh, definitely using their priorities in the wrong spaces, but the right places is where you will be next, because we're going to see that second game. Maybe see who's going to win this out, or maybe see the third map. I don't know what's going on. I'm not going to say anything. I'm not going to jinx it, but you guys should go grab a snack. We will be right back right after this break the game starts long before the game starts and warm hands are faster hands gain the upper hand and power up your pre-game warm-up with zippo hand warmers